the Tata Institute for Fundamental Research was uh, founded in 1945. Um, can we talk a little bit about the history and particularly the man who founded it, Homi Baba? Yeah, so I mean, Baba was of course quite a remarkable person and uh, he had a passion for physics, he was a theoretical physicist of high order, but uh, more than that he was a builder, he built an institution, which is the Tata Institute of Fundamental Research, and many other things in the country, I mean, uh, which came out of, largely out of the, this institute. Um, you know, when he went to Cambridge uh, to study engineering, and while in Cambridge he discovered his love for physics and science and so on, and he negotiated with his father about changing subjects, but his father said, okay, provided you get a first class in engineering, right. which he did, and uh, then went on to do, of course, spectacular work in theoretical physics. I mean, uh, got a, a, a bachelor's degree and then, of course, a PhD as well. Uh, but I believe that his training in engineering was actually crucial to his eventual success in building institutions because he actually of course had a vision and he knew what was required but he knew how to do it and I think the engineering training that he had you know really helped. And it was late 1930s when he was at Cambridge. That's right. And that was the time when nuclear physics was making a lot of headway. Correct. And I guess that's what motivated him, a bit like students of today would go into information technology or genetics. Yes. It's what was the that's right. It was exciting. I mean, it was whole new worlds opening up. I mean, he was especially inspired by Dirac and others who were at Cambridge. Uh, and he did a phenomenal work there. He worked on cosmic rays and on elementary particle physics and made very, uh, I would say, important contribution. And Dirac was one of his teachers? I believe so, yes. Although he did not do his thesis work with uh, Italy. Really. Um, when Baba got the uh, idea and the, the funding to set this up, uh, he was working in Bangalore. So was this institution established in Bangalore or here in Mumbai? No, it was indeed in, established in Bangalore. You know, in, 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 in the sense that uh, uh, Baba was a reader at the Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore. Uh, C.V. Raman uh, recognized Baba's many talents, brought him over, and he was working there. And uh, it's from Bangalore that, it's in Bangalore that he conceived the institute, and uh, from Bangalore that I think he corresponded with the Tata Trust. Right. Uh, so the institute started in June 1945 in a corridor of the Indian Institute. <laughs> in yeah, the right. Right. It moved later yeah, it that same year to Bombay. And now you have this fabulous establishment here, it's a terrific building. But originally he used his own home in Pedder Road mm -hmm. and the old yacht club as the initial premises. What role, role do those two places now play mm -hmm. now that you've got this? Building? Because that, that was his aunt's home, although Baba was born there, but uh, it belonged to his aunt and she was very generous. She gave about half of the space to, right. to Homi Baba and his colleagues right. and uh, served tea to them, a tea every day. Uh, so today that uh, bil bungalow, as it was, is no more. Mm -hmm. There's a multi-story building there which houses uh, officers and uh, staff of the Department of Atomic Energy, which was one of the departments which was set up uh, in the 1950s. And the Old Yacht Club is the other, other place you asked about. So that is the headquarters today of the Department of Atomic Energy, countrywide. So oh, it's it. centered there. It's a terrific location, right on the seafront. That's right on the seafront. <laughs> Beautiful. And it's a heritage building. Yeah. The Tata Institute for Fundamental Research is an institute for research, but you're also an academic establishment. You undertake, you take undergraduates here. It's, it's like a university. That's right. How does that work? So it's just like a standard university? You issue degrees? Uh, no, it's not quite like a standard university. I mean, uh, I guess the importance of uh, students 
in research in physics is sort of uh, known to everybody. And uh, when Bhaga started in 1945, even at the time he was in Kenilworth, that is his aunt's place, mm -hmm. there, there were students already. Uh -huh. So he had graduate students there. Right. Uh, if you read uh, Bhaga's uh, you know, later writings, mm -hmm. he makes the point that uh, in, you know, when India wants to embark on a large-scale nuclear power effort, it should not have to look outside for its own manpower. Right. <coughs> and uh, the idea of training large numbers of students, uh, therefore, was sort of very natural. Um, the relationship with the Indian Space Research Organization. Well, the, in the past, it was a much stronger connection because Baba was so involved in finding uh, and establishing the, what was initially the Inco Spa, that led to That's Israel. Good. What's the relationship today? So there, there is this um, project which is known as AstroSat. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. you, you know about that. Which carries these uh, multi-wavelength uh, uh, telescopes, generally in the X-ray region. Mm -hmm. um, so of the four large, pay, four payloads, three were developed in the institute. Oh, right. Or, one is actually being developed, right? I mean, right. the final touches are being put. Now, Baba is known for many things, uh, right. but it all started because of his insightful research in the early days, and he came up with um, the discovery of what is, we now call Baba scattering. The consequences of his work was that the prediction that there is a particle that's intermediate in size, heavier than an electron, but not as heavy as a proton. Or the the and these mesons were the product of his thinking, his innovative uh, innovation, Indeed. I guess. I mean, it, this does not directly relate to Bhava scattering at all. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's quite a separate contribution, but right. uh, but uh, quite right. So he was uh, uh, indeed uh, strongly involved in uh, you know the idea that there is a meson which, just like a photon is supposed to carry the interactions between electrons and positrons, so also that could be, or it was thought, a particle which would, could uh, carry the interactions between nuclei and mm -hmm. uh, uh, nucleons. One of the other things he was able to tie in there was, um, as you said, these interactions take place as a result of cosmic rays, so very high up in the Earth's atmosphere. And because those are created at very high altitudes and they dissipate fairly early, but because of the energies involved, these products actually do make it further down into the atmosphere when they're detected. And that was only because of the relativistic effects were involved. That's right. And that's something else that he contributed to through Indeed, his work. That's right. This a very graphic and you know, uh, hands-on illustration of this idea of time dilation of Einstein. He was a mathematician and a theoretical physicist. Baba was involved in a lot of practical experiments oh, yes. as well, and some of the experiments involved sending balloons up with detectors. That's correct. Um, and to make to actually make those kind of uh, measurements. And indeed, to this day, we have a very fine balloon facility. Still. Yes. Oh, it's still operating in right. Hyderabad. These balloons go pretty high up in the atmosphere, so like 40 to 50 kilometers, and we've actually sent payloads up to beyond 50 kilometers above the uh, Earth. But recently, we, one of our balloons was used uh, by an American um, uh, project called Stratex, uh -huh. which, is, which aims to explore the stratosphere. Right. And uh, it actually carried a human uh, to the height of about 42 kilometers. A human? Human. And this was an executive, uh, we had the exact designation from Google. Right. Uh, and he did. He jumped from from that height, free fall for about ten minutes. So very quickly, moving faster than the speed of sound. Right. And uh, oh, this well, was the record-breaking. Uh, I forget yes. his name, but uh, yeah, right. it's very highly publicized. Yes. And indeed. what's the connection between his well, balloon and? No, the, the balloon was made by us. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. One of uh, Baba's many famous quotes. Uh, in it, he says. Uh, it's the duty of people 
like us to stay in our own country. And he was talking to Chandra Shekhar, and he was saying this just as he was established this institute, and yes. he decided that India was where he was going to be staying. And Chandra Shekhar at that time uh, was in Chicago. Um, he never came back and settled. No. Did many other Indian scientists based abroad come as a result of what uh, Baba was doing here? Uh, a few did. Uh -huh. Yes, so in specific areas, uh, um, uh, so, so if I think of the early years of the institute, I mean, for instance, I'll just give uh, another example, uh, yeah, so magnetic resonance, uh -huh. you know, I mean, uh, this was uh, uh, started in the institute fairly early on, in the early 1950s. 1950s? Wow, yes. I see. <laughs> and uh, uh, Baba actually wrote somewhere, which is, I think, quite prescient, I mean, that uh, uh, one day magnetic resonance methods may indeed be used for biology. Right. I mean, and of course that's very much the case today, right. but uh, to realize that in like, the early 50s was yeah. something else. Yeah. Yeah. Professor Dharmati, I believe, was trained abroad and uh, was one of the early people he attracted here. but. Our full radio astronomy program, I mean, started when uh, Baba invited three radio astronomers to... Of course, they may not have been very established, uh -huh. but uh, they were certainly well-educated and well... Uh, on, 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 on the way to a you know, a very good career in the West. Uh -huh. uh, they did come back, and one of them, namely Govind Swaroop, went on to establish our, establish our Uti radio telescope uh, as well as the JMRT, right. the giant meter wave radio telescope which we operate in uh, near Pune in Kodad. And they're still both actively managed yes. and used for research? Well, both are being actively used for research. JMRT of course is a major international facility. This is the largest facility in meter wave. Uh, radio waves in the world. In the 1950s, when um, there was uh, an American nuclear scientist, Bernard Peters, who came from the US to work here for a while. Right. I think he was, was only not, here he was not actually American. I believe he was Danish. But oh, I see. You, maybe you, you should check this. Yeah, I'll check so. that. Right. Yeah, You're okay. probably right. I, I just. I mean, he was working in the US at the yes. time. Yes. Okay, okay. You're, you're, you're right uh, in that sense. Yes, yes. So, Besides him, who stayed here, I, I was only for a year or two or something mm -hmm. like that, do you get, uh, I imagine you get visiting scientists, but do you get scientists who stay here for a year or two or longer periods? Yeah, we have had uh, people in, I mean, uh, relatively recent times all, as well. For instance, uh, Pablo Garcia, Spanish, Spanish. Mm -hmm. Person stayed many years, I forget how many years right, in, in the mathematics department, but he right. has gone back now to The other person he brought in, mm -hmm. I would say uh, against the wishes of the physics department here, right. uh, was Ubaid Siddiqui, uh -huh. a biologist. Right. And uh, Baba was convinced that, uh, you know, molecular biology has a great future. Uh -huh. This was uh, in the 1960s, and Siddiqui founded the first modern school of biology in the country, in some sense, uh -huh. of modern biology, I should say. And that was set up here, and uh -huh. then went on, branched out into the National Center for Biological Science. I really appreciated the range of sciences oh, that you yes. work in. You already mentioned biology, maths, science, radio yes. astronomy. One of the things that, um, again, not many people know, and I only learned recently, is that um, the very first computer built in India okay. was built here. That's correct. It was designed here, it was built here. Right. This is the Tifra. And what happened to it? Uh, well, it was dismantled, I mean, uh, yeah. sadly. Yeah. Um, and I guess I mean, some it of the... It was used for scientific computing right. on software. Mm -hmm. uh, on the, you know, and so it was recognized that uh, software is very important for the country to end, for, for India to get into and we had an excellent set of people here. They moved out 
They founded what's called what was called the NCST, the National Center for Software Technology in Juba. Which Barber uh, asserted that the role of fundamental research, uh, research that's not designed for any economic output in the end. Um, that's what this institute was set for, just pure research. Is that um, something that third world countries should be pursuing? Definitely. I mean, because the largest advances you know, come from things that you don't plan for. Right. So, so that's the value of blue sky research, right? Your stint as director of TIFR mm -hmm. came to an end only a few days ago. That's after correct. seven years. Yes. What changes do you think took place? Just a few examples over that period. Mm -hmm. you, uh, uh, probably the largest uh, change, well, I don't know about change, but the largest initiative uh -huh. has been the founding of this new campus of ours in Hyderabad, uh -huh. which is uh, much larger than the campus here. And the aim is to have many, many more research students. Next year, uh, no, this year, marks the 70th anniversary of this institution. So over that 70 years, if you were to pick up one or two items that, in which way do you think India has benefited from having this institute around in the first place? Well, the most uh, sort of... Uh, okay, so the one thing has been that there have been many, many spin-offs mm -hmm. from the Institute. Uh, the largest and the most visible today is the Department of Atomic Energy. So that right. grew out of the Institute. And uh, the Department of Energy is the department that's responsible for generating electricity through the civil nuclear program. So yes, that came right. out of here. Yes. What percentage of uh, the electrical power for India is generated to it's nuclear? A few percent. A few yes. percent. Space was the other. Yes. Uh, uh, so, so uh, Vikram Saravai and Dr. Baba had a very mm. fine relationship. So, if you look at all the academic institutions in India, mm. uh, IITs. Uh, the ICERs, the new ICERs, etc. You'll find a lot of people who have actually uh, graduated from the institute. And of course, besides the scientific expertise, we hope they carry what we regard as very important change. We always call the TIFR culture. Uh -huh. Lack of hierarchy. Um, getting to the heart of things quickly. And working together to solve problems former director at, here at TIFR. Thank you very much indeed for your time. I really appreciate you. it. Very interesting. Thank Thanks you. a lot. Thank you.